Steve Lake. There's a former Washington insider now living in Sydney, Australia. My name is Sean Britton from the radio station 2SER. You can find us every week on iTunes, Wooshka, Facebook and Twitter at US of Ed. Firstly, the Mueller report, it's complete. We haven't been able to read it, but we've got Attorney General William Barr's summary and Trump World is claiming total exoneration. Mueller, not all it was cracked up to be it. It's not all it's cracked up to be, and we don't know what's in it. Uh, the most important thing, and we've been saying this for months, is that uh, the Mueller report was going after the president's men or women not after the president, because they couldn't pin anything on him. So, notice they stripped away his family, they went after his money, they went after his contacts and his connections. Because it's very difficult uh, to pin anything on the president, particularly with this collusion rap, when he wasn't running much of a campaign anyway, and the Russians aren't that stupid, they wouldn't be allies to people who were just ridiculous. So I think that was one I wasn't surprised on. But I think I have to read the report to be assured he was not attempting to thwart justice here. He fires Comey. He sends up all these smoke flares. He lies. The people around him lie. He tells people to lie. If, that not, if that's not obstruction of justice, what is it? This is exactly the point we're at, Ed, because you and I and everyone in the media at the moment, we're just conjecturing now about what is or isn't in the report. The report is 300 pages long, and we've got a four-page summary. To say anything for certain, we need the full report, and we would need to know what's in these sealed indictments Mueller has already created, uh, but what's being blocked by from uh, public release. Well... Uh, it's taking some time because I think what Barr is trying to do is make sure his four-page memo and what he releases are consistent. Uh, it's not that there's some classified information there because those quotes were so selected, they were partial sentences. They weren't even whole sentences. So I think he's in a quandary here. How can I make this report, this 300 pages long, match it with the summary I wrote? That's his dilemma, and it's going to take a little while to get through it. Are we likely to see it anytime soon? Well, he has to get out pretty soon, because the longer he delays, the less credibility is in the four pages. So he's really got to get out quick smart. Furthermore, he's got House committees already investigating people in the report. They want to be exonerated, or something should happen to them. So... He's caught in the hot, hot, uh, the hot house here, and he's got to deliver. Well, they're too speaking of the, the House committees. Now the Mueller report has been completed with no more charges. Where to with congressional investigations? Well, it's not no more charges. There will be no in new indictments, but there's some sealed charges that have not yet been unsealed. And those sealed charges may be against people close to the president. Uh, we don't know that yet, but I suspect uh, they are. So, waiting on the sealed indictments, how likely are we going to see those anytime soon? Uh, we can't see them before the report is released, I suspect. Uh, but it'll be pretty much coterminous. The report's released, and those sealed indictments uh, come out, and these are grand jury reports, and so they'll go right to a judge. Uh, for setting up trials. In a bit of non muller news this week, some other people in legal strife. Uh, Stormy Daniels lawyer Michael Avenatti for a, uh, a brief moment, a shining star for Andy Trumpers. He's been arrested and accused of attempts at extortion. Uh, what's going on? Well, he did seem a little sleazy, didn't he? <laughs> uh, he was a great advocate for Stormy, but it was clear that he was in it for the money. And um, I guess when you cross the line, you don't know when you cross it, because uh, he certainly didn't. And now he's in triple trouble. Both California and New York have indicted him for trying to get money from companies to pre prevent him from using his media might 
to embarrass the companies. He's really in deep doo-doo now, and I don't think he's going to get out. And he can't appeal to the public and say, oh, they're after me, because it happened in two places. If it only happened in one, maybe. But I think uh, Michael Avenatti, uh, he wears some pretty sharp suits. I wonder how one in orange would look. <laughs> Uh, actor Jesse Smollett, we haven't talked about this one, but he made headlines firstly with claims he was attacked in a brutal, racially motivated assault by two men in Make America Great Hats. Uh, Make America Great Again Hats. Claims that wound up being false. Now, he was charged with filing a false police report, but those charges uh, this week have been dropped. This is not a good look, Ed. Well, I think we have the same thing with Trump. Uh, the charges that he was um, indicted for uh, weren't going to stand up before a jury. And no prosecutor wants to go in unless he has all the goods. And I think there were conflicting pieces of evidence, including some witnesses that say they saw an event that looked like that, but they couldn't identify whether it was Smollett or not. So I think this is one of these issues, very much like Trump. We don't have all the goods, so we've got to let him go. But we're pretty sure he did it. And finally, just on uh, legal woes, in terms of legal woes, uh, former Trump advisor George Papadopoulos has applied for presidential pardon. What's going on? Well, George Papadopoulos, I saw him uh, on a news show the other day trying to defend himself with his wife. First of all, they contradicted one another. Secondly, he says he was entrapped but I trapped by a friend of his wife. But, you know, one of these deals where she didn't know him very well and uh, how he was entrapped when he says what the man said and that's cooperated. I think he's in for perjury again. Uh, little slimy squirrel. <laughs> Said he got uh, some street cred from being so close to Trump during his uh, 12 days in prison, apparently. Ah. Uh. Yeah, he's lucky he got out of uh, Trump land prison. I think there's now a full prison full of Trumpers. In uh, other news, $1 billion has been diverted from army funds in order to build a section of Trump's beloved wall, 57 miles of the wall, in fact, without congressional approval. Uh, this one seems like an interesting one, Ed. I don't know how that can happen. I'm being honest here. Mm -hmm. Um I don't see why the army would even do it because any army officer who does this is in contempt of Congress and can go to jail. Uh, even though the chain of command uh, goes to the president, but that's only in a time of war or national emergency. In ordinary peacetime, uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the Secretary of the Army are held responsible for that budget, not the president. So I think uh, somebody could actually be in very deep trouble here. The Congress, Democrat and Republicans cannot let this go. And in disaster news, the Midwest floods we talked about last week, uh, devastating stuff. And I understand the big concern now is that there could be toxic chemicals leaking into the water, creating a massive public health hazard. How is recovery looking? Uh, not good. And, and there's another fire in Texas that's been burning for a week with toxic chemicals spilling out. You know, this actually may be good for the climate change agenda. Not to say that people are gonna to convert to climate change, but they'll be against these chemicals and things that are in their backyards, oil, gas, and coal, that are ruining the environment for them to live in. And when you start removing those things, you're dealing with climate change. So uh, this is bad news creating good news. And just in a similar vein, despite all the criticisms that enough hadn't been done, it's been revealed this week Trump wanted less money going to Puerto Rico, not more. Oh, would you believe? Please. Uh, he was throwing toilet paper at him. Let's, let's get clear here. Uh, Puerto Rico is not a place he respects. He doesn't respect the government there, and he doesn't respect the citizens there. I don't know why he's doing this because there's a boomerang effect with all Hispanics on this one. He's, um, perhaps he doesn't think these things through, uh, but these are citizens of the United States and 
When he does this, the people of the Midwest said, we can't trust him either, and we're not sure we're going to get our aid. As a matter of fact, uh, several hundred million has already been diverted to the wall of aid that would go to uh, these Midwestern states. So uh, this is not a monarchy. He just can't do what the hell he wants. And I think he's emboldened now that the uh, Mueller report is over. He's going to keep doing this. He's going to try to get rid of Obamacare by executive order. He's really become um, crazed with power. And just finally, I mean, while we're south of the border, it's a very different situation, evidently. But uh, while we're down there, going from Puerto Rico to Venezuela, reports just coming through this morning that Russia is showing up in Venezuela, considers Venezuela a very important spot for them. While Trump is sort of protesting that move and saying that all options for U.S. action in Venezuela remain under consideration and warning that Russia has to get out of the South American nation. What do you make of this one, Ed? Um, too early to tell, but this is really scary. And I don't see why the Russians have done it. Uh, this could be very... They're trapped in the in South America. They have no friendly allies nearby. It's not like Syria, where they can find some friendly allies nearby. This is not a good move for Russia. It doesn't look good for them. And why they would do it now makes no sense at all. Uh, I think this is way beyond the diplomatic pale, and the United States will not take this. This is U.S. territory. Latin America has always been U.S. backyard. It reminds me a little bit of a missile crisis involving another uh, nearby nation that uh, had a very, very different leader in place at the time. But I think the response will be the same. U.S. evidence produced in the studios of 2SER in Sydney. Help support the work we do by going to 2SER.com slash support. Ed and I'll be back next week to talk the latest in U.S. news and politics. Subscribe on iTunes and Wooshka to stay up to date and show us some love on Facebook and Twitter at US of Ed.